All right, we got triple. We got bluefish, pompano, and Captain B's got something on. What a day. Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong here with Captain B. We are gonna be doing some beach fishing today. A biggest question that's come in from members is, is how to determine what spot to go to. Should we be over this way? Should we be over here? What do you look for, Captain B? Today's a great example of it because we've got stronger surf than normal, but it is very fishable. This will also produce some different catches for us. What you're gonna look for is something that looks different. If you look this way to the north, you'll see it's fairly uniform. There's not a lot of, of differences in the waves and the pattern on the shore. But as we turn and come down to the south, you'll see an area here as these waves go back out where you've got a definite pattern of an outflow. You can see it now where the waves are actually making an outward wave. What that means is we've got a trough coming from either the north or the south. In this case, it's coming from the north, which is producing a flow of water that's coming in that then pulls the water back out. That's going to create an area of fish on both the north and south side because it will stir up the bottom and it will get the bait up and active for us. So that's the type of area you're looking for, something that looks different. You don't want to fish directly in that. You want to fish either north or south of it. In this case, we're going to fish north of it. Yeah, it even looks like right there on that shore break there, you can see it's obviously looking different. With exactly little, right. I mean, the point that's sticking out exactly, and everything. Exactly. I mean, that's a, that's a textbook example. You couldn't Wikipedia better. Perfect. So we're going to go set up right about there and we'll pick up once we get set. All right, so we have the rod set up. We're gonna go four rods. So what about weights? What are your tips on weights for this type of surf? What do you say that, what size waves are these? Mean? This is about uh, three foot. Uh, I mean, it's steady at three foot. The problem with this is they're very random. We don't have a pattern, so you can't really time it if you were fishing artificials. And as far as we're fishing the set lines, which we're doing, we're gonna have some pretty significant current. We're gonna try and go with a four ounce pyramid. I like to go as light as possible. We may have to switch to the Sputnik. If these start to tumble, always make sure in conditions like this, you do have Sputniks with you so you can change out. Don't let your baits tumble up and down the beach. It's gonna get in your other lines, you're gonna tangle your lines, you're not gonna get any fish. All right, so about to rig up. Uh, so what, uh, what, baits we, what baits you feeling for today? On the first two set rods that we're putting out, we're gonna go with just straight up shrimp. You're gonna peel them like we do, take the tails off, and we're gonna use smaller pieces. Again, uh, the pompano have very small mouth, even the permit. So we're going to take that and we're going to break that in half. And that's the size baits we're going to be using right there. So no fish gum today. No, no fish gum today because I'm out of fish gum uh -huh. today. The fish gum will arrive later today. It's a popular product and it's selling out quick, which is good for Tony. But uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're going naked today. Well, otherwise you'd just put, you'd have the same size shrimp, but just put a little uh, chunk of fish gum on there. That's correct. Yep. Cool. So doubling up. Double Same exact up. thing every time. We got the. the this is float. a Salty's rig, the Salty's Pompano rig. This is the one, the bottom has the float, which is predominantly the Pompano. I'm not saying you can't catch the Pompano on the bottom. Uh, the bottom, excuse me, the bottom is uh, naked with no float. The top has a float. This will stay on the bottom, closer to the bottom, more for whiting, um, bluefish, flounder. And then this, the float, will lift it up and keep it off the bottom. So it just gives you two different type of action on the same bait. Cool. Yeah, and my, my rod's this next one, and that one has two floats on it, so we'll be curious to see. And that's also a salty. That's the uh, Bama Beach Pump series is on yours. Got it. Cool. All right, so uh, as far as placement, are you trying to get out to the, the middle trough, or like, wh where are you aiming for? So here? we've got a, right now we've got a rising tide, and it's rising pretty quickly. You can see some bait here in that swell. It just came up right there. I'm going to try to get this in between where those bait are and that wave you can see there, just Got on the it. back side of that bait. Oh, already on. <laughs> that didn't take long. Literally just starting to bait up my rod. Any idea what it is yet? It's oh, catfish. Oh, Got fish on, um, fish on. Um. Oh, I got one. Doubled up? Ha <laughs> ha Well, there's been a lot of action. We've been soaking baits for maybe a total of three minutes and we got three fish oh uh, it's a cat <laughs> double cat oh so as you can see this bite started off really hot unfortunately it was the catfish that were most active of all but as you'll see in the q a at the end is that a, you know a lot of catfish is actually a good sign that means there's a lot of life in the area and, and as, as you'll see, we stuck to this same zone and we finally started getting some good species. We just had to weed through a lot of catfish, 
But here in a second, we start getting some better action. In the meantime though, sure was fun just to get strikes. So I just casted mine. Let's see if mine gets hit. Oh, mine's already on too. <laughs> There's gotta be something else out there with all the, all the food. Oh, nice whiting, nice whiting. Sir. Heck yeah. Stud, he's going in the box. Yeah. Very nice. Let's see if we can double up on something cool here. Oh, uh, I'm not so lucky. That's a full sandwich right there. Yeah, that is a beautiful fish. If the you, elusive whiting. If you have not eaten these, do yourself a favor and do it. If you like flounder, you'll love whiting. Nice. Wonderful fish. Nice. So here's uh, the next cast and just another great example of how hot this bite was. I literally casted it out. Um, started walking the rod back to the holder and fish on before I set it down. All right, see how long that was. Oh, I already got one. <laughs> already? I couldn't even get in the rod holder. Let's see what we have here. This is flat. Oh, look what we have here. That's good fish. Heck yeah. Palomitas are delicious. So what is that? It's called a palomita. It's in the same family as the pompano and permit. Palomita. I've never even never caught one of these before. There's no regulation on them. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. It's 100 pounds, um, same as a whiting. They're delicious fish. You can cook them just like a pompano. Huh. Do you keep them when they're this small? That's about as, that's, that's a medium size one. There's a lot of meat on that. You can go in the cooler. Oh, really? Sure. Yeah. Pretty awesome. First palomita. This one's coming home to do a little taste test. Oh, another palomita. Nice. Put him in your box. Perfect. Heck yeah. Outstanding. I saw something big jump in the, in the surf too. It was either like a big snook or a small tarpon. Oh! Bigger palomita. Jack attack. Small. Whitey. Aha! It's deeper too. Nice. So as you can see, we're getting a bunch of action. We had a lot of catfish that I didn't bother showing. And this was the biggest fish of the day. And we thought it was something. Turns out that with the footage, I actually caught it on film. It was a, a very surprised species that I was not expecting. So here is what happened. Whoa! Whoa! Oh! Oh, something jumped too. Man! Whatever it was jumped. Oh. So I went and zoomed in on the footage. You can see it on the right. Here's the jump. And as you can see, we thought it was a spinner shark, but as you can see with this jump, it was a tarpon. That is, uh, that is definitely a tarpon jump. Really cool to see a tarpon hit a pompano rig. Well, that's a bummer. Just had something big on. Whoa, whoa. whoa. That's big, that's big. It's like fighting good. Is that bluefish? Nice. That's cool. Alright, we got triple. We got bluefish, pompano, and Captain B's got something on. What a day. We're gonna let this guy go. Oh, and a catfish. <laughs> yeah, so this is definitely a target species right here. The old pompano. These are delicious. They just have to be a whole lot bigger than that. Shortly after that triple, we caught this sail cat to add to the species count as well as a couple croakers, but we wanted to finish this off with a very helpful beach fishing Q&A. All right, so we just uh, we just finished up here and that was non-stop action. Captain B, was it like two hours, two and a half hours we were fishing? Yeah, about two hours. Something like that, so we, we uh, it was insane. So some questions came in from members when I was coming over here. Number one is, hey, if you're getting catfish, what do you do? Is that a good sign or a bad sign? When you have conditions where you've got dirty water or greenish water, you're going to have to deal with catfish. It's just part of the game. Keep in mind that catfish are seeking out bait as well. They're trying to seek out pretty much the same food source as our target species. So just because you're getting catfish, don't get discouraged. We caught a lot of catfish today, but we also filled a cooler up for Luke to take home and do a taste test with. We caught some really quality fish, also some keepers that we threw back, some bluefish, etc. So just because you're getting the cats, don't move out of the way. The other fish don't mind the catfish being there. They're not scared of them. You're gonna catch other fish, just put the time in and weed through them. So we another question, I got, I got my phone right here. This one is from, uh, from Joe Robles. Uh, how, do you, how long do you stay in a spot if there's no action? Well, that clearly was an issue today. We, we were getting them nonstop. It takes a while to set up, so how long do you give it if nothing's happening? It really will depend on the tide and the winds for me. If we have a tide change, which we did today, we got here at dead low and fished an incoming tide. 
If I'm in an incoming tide and we are not getting action, that tells me we gotta move. So I'll check for other locations. What I do is step back on the beach and I'll look and see if there's another location that I think is better. If the place that I am fishing in still looks like the place I would go if I first got there, I trust my gut. But if you are not catching, yes, plan on being mobile, particularly this time of the year. Yeah, and pretty funny, uh, you can even show proof here if you can see it, but uh, but Art, so we saw Art uh, yeah. Heater here on the beach and he, he actually submitted a question before we saw him and it was uh, yeah, when to use a, a short section of wire. As a rule, when you're using a, a soft plastic or a, a hard plug or a metal in the surf and you're targeting toothy critters such as the Spanish, a small tip of the wire can definitely help. It will reduce your break-offs. Um, if you're fishing the lure properly, it's not going to affect the action. So again, if you're going after the toothy guys, a little tip of the wire is not going to hurt you. Cool. Next question from Timothy Dodge. What is the best tackle and method when there's a lot of vegetation? As far as tackle, you're really not going to change your pompano rig. The longer the rod, the better you're going to be because it's going to keep more of the line out of the water. So you're going to have a, a lot of line out of the water, big angle down to it. Unfortunately, it's part of what we go through. There is some sargasm today that we dealt with a little bit. If you get a little bit of weed on there, it's not going to hurt it. If you get a lot, you're going to have to just bring it in and shag it off. But again, a longer rod and keep the line out of the water as much as possible. All right, next question from Nick Christo. He actually has two questions. The first question, can you find flounder from the beach? Can you get flounder from the beach? You can, absolutely. Now, you're going to have more success with the flounder closer to the inlet. That's not saying that you can't catch them right where we're standing now. Keep in mind, a flounder is an ambush feeder. He's not searching for its food. It stays on the bottom and waits for the food to come to it. So you're gonna to wanna to be using a soft plastic that bounces on the bottom. If you're fishing live bait, live shrimp, or finger mullet, but keep in mind, you've gotta keep it on the bottom and keep the bait moving to find the flounder. The flounder's not gonna find the bait. Yeah, it makes sense. So the rigs we had today, we are probably very low chance, of, unless very you hit low. them in the head. Right, that's right. Them. All right, so, so his second question, is can you fish the trench right next to the beach? I know the answer to this one being a Gulf Coaster. Yeah, it's absolutely, 100%. You can, you can throw 10 feet out and fill your cooler up with whiting. You can even catch pompano. Right now, if we were first getting here now, well, number one, the current is, is crazy right now. I'd, I would be telling Luke, we gotta go to the river because we couldn't fish it. But if it was calm, we would be throwing right here in the first trough and we'd catch pompano, we'd load it up. I've even caught big snook in there. Another question here, and this is about tackle. So rod and reel choice, this is from Brian. Yeah, what, what's the rod and reel choice as far as non-surf rod feasible? Like if, if you don't have full surf rods, what do you recommend going with? Um, and if you've seen any of my other videos or my reports, I'm a big proponent of not going out and buying the big giant rod. First of all, it's a learning curve, learning how to use it. Yes, they are good and they can benefit in a lot of areas, but a simple rod set up um, like the Pin Battle, Pin Battle 2. And that's like a, that's like a six and a half foot, seven foot rod, That's right? a seven foot seven rod. Foot. This, you can catch anything out of the surf with this rod. I've caught big pompano, I've caught permit. I use it all the time fishing the set pompano rigs, particularly on my charters, because it's much easier for someone who's a beginner or a novice fisherman to use. It's, it's easy to hold, it's light, and they're used to dealing with something of this size. We catch a lot of fish with them, and that even stands doubly so on the other coast where you don't have to get out so far to catch the fish. So I, I just got my first serve rod. Mine's that uh, Daiwa, it's, it's probably the, it's like just over $100. I assume that's the, kind of the lower end. Yeah, it, it is. Get in the game but, type thing. Yeah, and, it, and again, if you are gonna take this as a, a major hobby and you're gonna start doing it, and if you do it and you like to fish, you're gonna fall in love with it. It's a very unique type of fishing. You're ultimately going to want to graduate into the longer rods, but start with what you have, and you will never see me on the beach without some of my, I call it my normal gear, my normal saltwater river gear. You'll never see me on the beach without it. Yes, you're always going to see me with these. In tournaments, you're going to see me with four or five of these. If I'm commercial fishing with four or five of these, but I'm still going to have one of my normal size rods with. All right, this question's for me, because I just got my first beach rod. It's 11 footer. Uh, should I go, I want to get another one because now I'm getting addicted to this. Should I go longer? Like is 11 foot, if, if you get into it as 11, uh, that's what I heard was a good choice, but I never asked you about it, I just bought it. 11's a good good number. Um, you know, I, this this is 11 here, the uh, the pin here with the big reel on it. Yep. This is a 14 and I can throw this about uh, 45, 50 yards longer than yours are this one. Wow. Because of the, the extra foot and if I lean on it, I can get it a bit further than that. 
Uh, again, the learning curve is there. It's even more so than that. The extra three foot does make a difference. Yep. It's a timing issue. And that's the biggest problem people have with the longer rods is they are used to throwing the shorter ones so they're releasing too soon and that creates a little bit of a mess. So I've got some uh, delicious fish. I'll be uh, testing out right. the cooler here. What's the name of that one, Pompadino? Pa Palomita. Palomita. So explain the way to cook it. I'm going to try it tonight. With the Palomita, it's, it's very much like a, a Pompano. I scale them. Yes, they do have tiny little scales. And if you're not scaling your Pompano, your Permit, or your Palomita, start doing it. Use a spoon, scrape toward the head. They're tiny, tiny little scales. Once you get all that off, wipe it off with a napkin. You're going to gill it and gut it or cut the head off. You're going to cut scores in it, three to four scores in an X pattern. I make a, a batter, a dry batter, out of flour, two parts flour, one part cornmeal, and uh, Everglades seasoning. And as far as the two parts, one part, I don't measure it. I put it in until it looks right. Dip the fish in it. I get a, a I call it a spider. It's a, a cast iron pan, about a half an inch of peanut oil in it. Fry it real quick on one side, flip it over quick on the other side. Serve it with uh, some cucumber, onion, and tomato salad. Home run. Well, I'm going to do my best to recreate that. You, uh, you mentioned now I have it on film, so I'm just going to replay this as I try it tonight. <laughs> there you go. So quick update, I actually followed the recipe that evening and the Palomita on the left was absolutely amazing. I put it up against black and whiting, which also is great. The Palomita was the winner. All right, so final question is how do people get in touch with you? Every time I've been fishing with you, we've absolutely crushed it. And I know a lot of members are, are kind of new to beach fishing and would like some help and you, you are a guide for beach fishing. Absolutely. What, how can they get in touch? What's the best way? You can email me at captainb at usa.com. My website is my charter name, CaptainBSurfishingCharters.com. You can book on there. You can actually even pay for the trips and book on there. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. So any way you want to reach out to me, that's how you can get me. Sweet. Yeah, we're on the we're currently on the east coast of Florida, and uh, and yeah, he, he basically goes all around the state. But uh, man, this has been uh, highly. If you want to get into beach fishing, this is your guy. We're going to be having a lot more beach fishing content coming soon so if there's anything you'd like us to film next time leave a comment down below we'll, we'll be uh fishing probably once a month here for for quite a while and uh and so we're you know, looking for more ideas on what to film today was awesome and uh who knows what we'll get next time i, right. I assume pompano will be in soon we're right? gonna, we'll be getting colder season we'll get pompano and i call them the cleanup crew the permit are going to be Ooh. coming through so uh let's look for a permit we're trying to make that happen. So I've actually never caught a beach permanent or pompano. So really? I've okay. Never, I've okay. caught pompano in the in, in shore. But well, that's our beach. goal to make that happen. And uh, I feel for certain we can make them both happen. All right. We'll give it a try. Okay. But yeah, I'm, thank you so I'm much. putting it out there. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for watching. As I mentioned before, any questions at all, comment down below. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're an online fishing club. And we have two big, bold guarantees. Number one is we promise you'll be catching more fish than you ever have before. We have a ton of lessons. This is just the free stuff. We have courses and we even have a community with over 50,000 members now that are all about helping each other out. And so number two, we promise you're gonna save money on all the tackle you need. All members get at least 20% off of all tackle, except for reels. But for reels, you get free line, free spooling of the line, and free shipping anywhere in the US. So to learn more about that, saltstrong.com. We'll put a link down below. Otherwise, thank you so much for time watching. We hope to see you again soon.